So let's get started. Good morning, everybody. My name is Debbie, and I'm coming to you from the math science nucleus. Now, this year at Mattos Elementary, we're going to be doing some long-term science experiments. You have a project just for, just for you guys, just for kindergarten, and it has to do with temperature. All right, and we're going to do a little presentation on this about what we're going to be studying. So let me share my screen. And let's see if it comes up. So hopefully you can see, oh, hopefully I can get rid of some of this, okay. Let me get rid of this little black screen here. Okay, that little last line should be going away. And then we can get started. So kindergarten's long-term project has to do with temperature, water, and weather. Now, you all are going to be doing a long-term project with your teachers. So like every week, you're going to be taking the temperature and plotting it and graphing it. Um, but you're also going to meet with your parent docents and volunteers, and you're going to do about six lessons with them. And all of those lessons have to do with like clouds and temperature um, and water, things like that. Well, if you're going to support your long term. All right. So here we go. Let's see if we can get started. Always takes me a minute to get that going. OK, listen to this. Does that sound like good weather or bad weather? Can you guys show me with your thumbs? Did that sound like good weather or bad weather? Yeah, well, it depends. If we needed a lot of rain, that would be good weather. But most of us would consider that stormy weather, bad weather. If you look at this picture, look at all these dark gray clouds. You see my red laser pointer? Look at these dark, these dark gray clouds. They're carrying a lot of moisture, a lot of water. And look at this crackling through the sky. This is what's called lightning. And the lightning is energy that's expanding through those clouds and it makes that real loud thunder sound. And you heard all those raindrops falling. So this is what we would call stormy day the weather would be stormy so these are some of the things that we're going to be looking at oh now what's happening why is melting it's not he's got to be outside right so he's melting as he's inside talking to her oh so we're going to be talking about the changes of the states of matter and how temperature affects these states of matter. So when I'm talking about the temperature, I'm talking about ice, water, and then liquid and the gases. Okay, so we've got all the liquids, gases, and, and the um, solids that we're talking about. We're talking about the temperature on land and the temperature on water and how they're different. We're going to be talking about all the different types of weather and collecting our data. Data is what scientists use to make some decisions. All right, so here's a quick little video about a meteorologist kid. It has all the different parts in it that we're going to do. Here we go. Hi, I'm Claire, and if I could be anything, I would be a meteorologist. That's a weather scientist. I'd study the sky and know all about the weather outside. It's my job to know if it's sunny or rainy. And warm. Or cold. I would have my very own weather station. That's where I would study what's happening in the sky. The thermometer would tell me the temperature outside, whether it's hot or cold. The weather vane would tell me what direction the wind is blowing. North, east, south, or west. And when the white clouds turn big and gray, I would know that rain is coming. All right, so that again had all the different parts of it. And someone that studies the weather is called a meteorologist. 
meteorologist. All right, now you will see this picture a lot as we're doing this unit of study. Uh, but do you see the sun, the bright sun? Do you see this water that's coming up? Can you guys do your fingers like that going up? Do you like magic fingers when they're going up? So that warm sun warms up the water. It calls it evaporate. So it goes from a liquid to a gas. So it evaporates. Then it forms clouds as condensation. Can you guys put your arms over your heads and become a cloud? So that's when all the little dust particles start collecting all those water molecules. And it makes our big cloud. Then when the clouds get too heavy with all those water molecules, it starts to rain as precipitation. So we have evaporation, condensation, and precipitation. So those are some big words that go along with some of our easier words. So again, these are some of the things that we are going to be looking at about our water and the states of matter that it is here on earth. Now here's a quick storybook called Drippy the Hippie. Drippy the Hippie by Cassie Fries, animated by Doris Rayer and Hagos Tavolti. This is a little story about a little hippie that goes through the water cycle. I have a very busy life and I'm always on the go. I'm part of the water cycle. It's really cool to know. The gases, hydrogen and oxygen are what I am made of. I am clean and I'm fresh and peace is what I love. I am a groovy raindrop. My name is Hippie Drippy. Colorless and tasteless, I'm not your average hippie. I live up in the sky till the clouds turn dark gray, preparing for my trip. I wait for rain each day. I put on my favorite shirt, it's colorful and tie-dye. I wave to the clouds to say to them goodbye. I am a groovy raindrop. My name is Hippie Drippy. Colorless and tasteless, I'm not your average hippie. I fall from the clouds and land in a lake with many other drops. I really precipitate. I vacation here for a while, relax and get some sun. There are many drops who come to the lake for fun. I am a groovy raindrop. My name is Hippie Drippy. Colorless and tasteless, I'm not your average hippie. I swim in the lake and party with the fish. I wait to evaporate. It's the clouds I really miss. As a gas, I will rise and travel really high back to the clouds, up into the sky. Condensation will happen I'll go back to the state of being a raindrop waiting to precipitate. I am a groovy raindrop. My name is Hippie Drippy. Colorless and tasteless, I'm not your average hippie. I am a groovy raindrop. My name is Hippie Drippy. Colorless and tasteless, 
I'm not your average hippie. Okay, so that's the end of our hippie drippy. Now, hippie was telling, or drippy was telling us a lot of different things about science that we needed to know with our water. Our states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas, usually what we're talking about with water, we are the, uh, our, that's the only liquid we have here on planet Earth. It is in all three states here on Earth. So it's very unique. It's a unique liquid or unique element. So if you look at this ice, see my red, red pointer here? I'm going to follow it around this ice cube. So this ice cube is really super cold, right? It's in the solid state of matter. It has a shape. You know, it's hard. But then look at the liquid in my cup or my glass. So that liquid is in a the liquid state of matter, this water, and it could also be as rain, right? If you were outside doing the weather. Now this cloud, we know in the weather we have clouds, but when our water molecules are a little bit heated up and spread out, they become this gas. Not like gas you put in a car, but gases like the gases in the air you breathe, and it's just a gas, the molecules are all spread out. All right, so we've got our solid, liquid, and a gas. So as our temperature goes higher, that's where it becomes the gas. As it goes colder, goes from a gas to a liquid, back to a solid. All right, you're going to do a couple experiments with that. This is to give you an idea of what that water looks like. Water is made of is H2O, two hydrogens and one oxygen. So look at this dot over here. H2O, you see the two hydrogens and the big round face here, that's the oxygen. But look at how spread out these are. These molecules are all spread out and they have a lot of energy. They're staying away from each other. This is in the gas state. But now you look at the water when it's like this, it's kind of close together. It doesn't really have a shape. It takes the shape of any container that you put it in. So this is when our water molecules are in the liquid form. Now look at this one. This is when the molecules are in a solid form. Now what's really cool about this is the way that they go together, the building blocks kind of, it does leave these little air spaces. And that's why ice cubes float. Okay, most solids um, will sink if you put them in water, but our ice actually floats because of the way it goes together. So again, we have a solid, liquid, a gas. All right, now this, has anybody ever been on an airplane? Has anybody ever been on an airplane? Okay, we took this, Dr. Joyce took this picture when she was on an airplane, and this is over Canada. And if you look down at this picture right here, can you see something that might be like a lake? And I'm gonna go ahead and make this video go, but it's kind of loud, it's loud on a plane. That's what you hear inside the plane. So we're looking for a lake. I see it right down here. What is all this white stuff? Anybody have any idea? That is actually some ice. So that is some water in the solid state. Now I also see in this picture a river. Can you guys see a river? River's kind of skinny. Look, it's all back here. And can anybody find the clouds? Oh, the clouds are right through here. This picture is a little hazy because we're probably in a cloud right now as we go through. I right, look at this one. Now, this is a picture over Germany. We're still up in the sky and we're going to look down and you see right down here in the middle, you can see some of the land. Look at all these different clouds. So one of the labs that you're going to do with your parent docents is looking at different types of clouds. So you'll be able to learn your clouds and learn what kind of weather they bring. So again, it's kind of loud as we go through. If you look out in the distance, though, you can see some clouds midway. We even have some clouds up high. So again, all the different types of clouds. All right, so here's that water cycle again. Remember I talked about it flows up as evaporation, forms clouds as condensation, rains down as precipitation. And this water molecule just keeps doing this over and over and over. All right, look at this picture. It's another airplane picture. This is over Greenland. Now, if you looked at this picture, would you be able to tell if it was hot or cold just by looking at it? 
Sure, because if you see the snow, look at all the snow down here. We know that snow only happens when it's about 32 degrees, so it's got to be colder than that. It's cold up in Greenland. Now, what's really cool are these are some big glaciers. You may have heard that word before, too. So these glaciers are helping to carve these valleys right here. But this term hot or cold, those are kind of some funny words, and we're going to discuss that hot and cold. All right. So temperature, we're talking about things that are hot or cold. We're talking about temperature, but it's kind of hard because what I think might be hot, you may not think is hot, right? Or what I think is cold, you may not think is cold at all. So we'll, we'll have to go through and kind of compare some of these terms. If we look at this water right here, or it might be soda since it's got bubbles, but it's pouring it in, but we have some what in this cup? some ice and a lime. So we've got ice in here. That means we're trying to make this colder, right? But what's happening to our ice cream? Is it cold enough to keep it as the ice cream frozen? No, this ice cream is now out in a nice warm room and look, it's all melting. So this ice cream has to be in a freezer to stay solid. Otherwise it starts turning into a liquid now look at this, somebody, you guys may have had this before, a good old bowl of hot soup. Looks like chicken noodle soup. So as you've got, we know it's hot. You see the steaming coming off. So it's just been on the stove, been cooking. Now, do you wanna go ahead and lurp up that soup when it's hot like that? You usually take a spoonful and what do you do with it? You might blow on it a little bit to cool it off. Because if you just went ahead and put it in your mouth, you'd burn your mouth, that would hurt. So we want to get it just right. We don't want it to be too hot or too cold. Now look at this cat. What is happening over here with this cat? We've got a cat laying on a dresser and look at this fan. The fan is blowing some air. So that's going to make this cat feel a little cooler. He is so hot, he's trying to cool off. So again, in talking about temperatures, we're talking about how hot or how cold something is. Now this temperature affects what you wear and what you do. So we don't have a lot of this snow in California um, where we are in Fremont. Last year, we did get some snow up on the top of the mountain peaks or the hills up at uh, Mission Peak. But look at this little girl. She's playing with her snowman, but look at how much clothes she's wearing. She's got her hat on. She's got a big jacket. It's like a sweatshirt or something under there, some snow pants some big snow boots to keep her feet warm because it's cold. So we may all think that that's pretty cold because we don't see a lot of snow. <laughs> now, what about this little kid? This little kid is stomping around, probably got on some rain boots. He's got a raincoat and an umbrella. So that tells me it was a rainy day there. And look at this mud puddle that he's jumping in. So that would be fun if it's not too cold, right? So he's got on long pants, so it's probably a little bit cooler. And once you're all wet, then you usually get cold as well. All right, look at this picture down here, swimming and playing in the water. This is something we do when it's warm outside and hot outside. So this part here, you see all these kids, they're flopping around, this colder water's making them cool off. Oh, but look, at he's got long sleeves on. Is that because he's cold? Well, it could be because sometimes you do get cold, but probably more to protect himself from the sun. Okay, so again, we get to play in water like this when it's warm. Okay, now look at these kids that here that are dancing and playing around. Now, if you look at these kids, look for some clues. Do you see anybody that's really sweating a lot? Like, are they looking super hot and tired? No, but they're wearing shorts and t shirts. So this tells me that right there in this picture, the weather is just right. It's probably about 75 or 70 degrees. All right. So sometimes our temperatures are just right. So again, weather influences you on what you wear. Now, if you look at this little kid, he's coming in. What do you think he is? He's hot or cold? Cold? Look at all the snow. So when you're cold, you kind of get squished all together like this, right? You put your arms real close because you're trying to keep yourself warm. But if it's hot, 
you kind of spread out a little bit, right? That's exactly what our molecules do. So when we're cold, we shiver, we kind of keep warm. So again, when you go outside when it's cold, you don't want to wear shorts in the snow. You don't want to wear flip-flops in the snow. So our weather helps us know what we can wear and the kind of activities that we can do. Now, because it's, again, temperature is so hard, because you might think it's hot and I might think it's cold, scientists use something called a thermometer. Can you guys say thermometer? Thermometer. We use a thermometer to measure temperature. That way, everybody knows exactly how cold or how hot it is. So you see this picture of this thermometer. This is kind of a typical thermometer, and it's measured in a couple different ways. We have Celsius. When we're measuring things in science, we always use this Celsius. And Fahrenheit, when your moms or dads are listening to the weather, try to figure out what clothes you need to wear today, they might be listening to something in Fahrenheit. Most other countries use this Celsius, but we're the only ones that are kind of hanging back out with Fahrenheit. <laughs> but if you look at this, thermometers are usually made, this kind of vertical kind, with a water and kind of probably alcohol that's down in the bottom. When the alcohol gets hot, it expands and it goes up this glass or plastic tube. So when it's a hot temperature, it's gonna be up here. When it's a cold temperature, it's gonna be down here. Okay, so we the whole time, the main thing we wanna focus on is just how this it's thermometer, how it's moving up and down with the temperature changes, okay? And sometimes we're gonna take this information and graph it. This is just a way of looking at how those numbers change over time. Look at all these different kinds of thermometers. Now for the next couple of weeks, um, I want you just to kind of pay attention to look around you and see how many different kinds of thermometers you can see. They are everywhere. So let's start over here. This one that has the number seven and two on it. Some of you may just be learning your numbers and that's okay. You don't know your numbers yet. We're gonna figure that out. This is a good way to practice them. So this right here, this thermometer is one that you would have maybe inside your classroom or inside your house at home. And it's a thermometer that tells you the temperature inside your house or inside your classroom, okay? Now this one is made a little different. This one has pieces of metal that are kind of shrinking and expanding at different, at different ways. So that's how we get our different temperatures. But this one is cool because it has these colors. This is really cold over here. And this is pretty good about here. We like it right about 60, 70 degrees. And then look at 100 and 120, it gets hot. So this is the same thing, the outdoor thermometer. And it's got Celsius on the inside and Fahrenheit there. These are fun to carry around. This is like a little digital thermometer. I like to carry these around sometimes. And I try to find the hottest place in my room. Or I try to find the coldest place in my room. So these are kind of fun to, to play with. This is one that actually shows me the temperature inside the house and the temperature outside the house. Okay, so you might see some digital ones. This, anybody recognize this? This is inside my freezer. Look, I got some frozen waffles in the back. So sometimes your refrigerators and freezers might have a thermometer in there. You can see it's way down here, the temperature in the middle. Um, and again, we need those thermometers to make sure our food is safe for us to eat. Look at this one down here. This one's different. This one is made to take temperatures of hot materials. So when you're cooking, this looks like I'm cooking some chili, then I can put that probe in there and it's going to give me a temperature. Again, to make sure I'm eating things that are safe. How about this one? You guys know, is this cold or hot? Hot. <laughs> yes, it's hot. You can tell, look. Mom's having to use um, a hot rack there. So she doesn't burn. If you just reached in, it would burn you, right? That wouldn't be good. So she's protecting her hands. But our oven has a temperature. It's probably right up here. Now, what's happened to this little guy? Oh, no. He must not feel well. So sometimes your body, when you get other germs or microbes in it, your body has to fight super hard to get those microbes out. And it makes your body heat up. That's when you have a fever. So we take your temperature. Sometimes you take it under your tongue and it has a digital reading. Or sometimes you have this kind that just touches your forehead 
or sometimes you might have one for your ear. But either way, when you have a fever, your temperature goes up, okay? And then you might need some medicine or just some rest. All right, so all different kinds of thermometers. So one thing that is important, these thermometers can, again, help us decide what's happening with our temperatures. Is it changing? Is it getting hot? Is it getting cold? And that changing temperature is gonna tell us about the weather. Now look at this picture here, you see this? Blue usually means that it's cold and red usually means hot. So as she's playing with these temp, as the temperature here of the ocean, look what's happening to the thermometer. It's cold, it's down low. It's hot, it's up high. Cold, it's down low. It's hot, it's up high. All right, so again, Temperature is very important because it controls the state of matter of our water. If it's super, super cold, it's gonna be freezing. The water is gonna be in a solid state of matter. It's like gonna be ice and snow. When it's cooler and warmer, it's gonna be a liquid state of matter like our rivers and our oceans and our rain. If it's way hot, if you look all the way up here at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 Celsius, Way up here, that water is now going to get so hot, it's gonna turn into a gas. So again, we have our solid, liquid, and gas. Now again, we're going to be learning all of our numbers, so don't let these things scare you. What we're gonna do is probably come up with a color grid so we can always find the colors. All right, so again, we're looking at temperature of land and water. Look at this picture. You guys know what that is? Is that Mars? Is that the moon? Is that the sun? That's Earth. That's where we live. Now here's getting ready to go by. There we are. We're right there in California. We just went around. So it's going to keep coming by. So this is a cool picture because it shows us the different temperatures on land and water. And we're going to be tracking some of these temperatures again and try to predict the weather. So again, how do we know if something's hot or cold? By the thermometer. Thermometer gives us the temperature. All right, look at this cool picture. This is another picture of Earth. But if you look at all that white stuff, the white stuff's not snow, that's just some cloud cover. And you can see the land underneath here, like this is India right here. The ocean is blue. But as you watch these clouds swirl around, when we're talking about weather, sure we have weather right here in our day to day, but we have weather all over the world. And our weather sometimes is going to shift and go all over the world. So again, when we do our experiments, you're going to take the temperature of land and of water. And you're going to see which one gets hot fastest and then which one cools off the fastest. It's that difference that makes our clouds and all spin all around, makes our wind. So our water and our land make a big difference with temperature. Now, this one is not as easy to see. But can you see this? This is California right here. Fremont's about right there. Look at these green arrows. You see the green motion? That's the wind. So we know we've got a lot of these big wind turbines around, right? So the wind is pushing those turbines. So the wind is just air that's moving. But we have air that's moving all over the world. And a lot of times it goes all around the world. So I get my air from, I'm over here in North Carolina, I get my air from this warm equator down here. So my air is always pretty warm. Look at your air. Your wind is coming down from Alaska. So that's why your winds are so much cooler than mine. So again, we have all these different things that affect our weather. Now, some of the different types of weather, we've got tornadoes, so that's super fast wind that forms over land. We've got hurricanes, and that's, again, <clears throat> big giant storms that form over the ocean. And they have super strong winds. Lizards, when we have too much snow. If any of you were able to go up into the Sierras and you see all that snow. Sometimes we have floods, and that's when we have too much rain. <clears throat> now, this was Alameda Creek last year. Look at how fast the water's going. Because, again, we had so much rain in a short time that usually this Alameda Creek only has a little tip of water. But look at how full it was and it washed all, all these broken tree branches and all down. Now, sometimes when we don't have any rain 
or a little precipitation, we call it a drought. California had been in a drought for many, many years. It can be hot or cold, but you see how it's all dried up and you get these big dust storms. Now, this is what Tule Ponds at Tyson's Lagoon looked at, looked like in 21. This is normally what it looks like with all this water. But since it was a drought, water was evaporating and there wasn't any precipitation to fill it in. So that's where we ended up with our drought. All right, so for your long-term project, we are going to be collecting data. If you look at these different kinds of thermometers, this is what I was talking about with colors. So we'll try to come up with some kind of a color code so that we just know if it's cold, cool, warm, or hot. So we don't exactly have to know our numbers and all quite yet. We just want to get into the general area. So once a week, you're going to go out and you're going to collect the temperature of outside. You're going to look to see if there are any clouds. And all you have to do here is put a Y for yes or a check mark or a no and NO for when will we know if there's wind and how will we know if there's rain? So some of these we have to decide as a class what we're going to do. All right, so when we look at this cloud right here, again, in one of the docent classes, you're gonna learn all about different kinds of clouds. But look at this, remember that first picture, stormy picture? This is definitely clouds that are full of rain, and probably the lightning and thunder, those big storms. Okay, so I would say this one is probably this picture over here, stormy. Look at this nice blue sky, with just a couple little clouds. So would you say it's sunny or would it be cloudy? Maybe we need a partly cloudy, okay? So we have to come up with our weather symbols. And I know teachers, you probably already have yours that you use all the time in circle time. And we can do this as circle time as well. All right, so we have to come up with our symbols and how to describe it. Now, if we're trying to decide if it's a windy day or not, one thing that I like to use, see this windy symbol? How this person's hair is blowing. See how it looks a lot like my windy symbol? Right. So we could decide, yeah, we could if somebody's hair is blowing around, then we could say it's windy. But none of us have long hair that blows around. But do we have long grass that blows around? If we could see the grass was moving, uh, they probably mow it a lot, don't they? Yeah, they probably keep it down. How about um leaves falling off of trees? Uh, they probably scoop those up too, huh? That's gonna be hard. Um, how about bubbles? Now she is blowing the bubbles, but what if you just held the bubble out, the bubble wand out? And if there was wind, then it would create some bubbles. Might be good. Or maybe a pinwheel like this. We could have a pinwheel out. And if the pinwheel is moving, then we could say we have wind. Okay. So here's kind of what we're going to do. Again, once a week, once we get started, won't be until like mid-October. But once a week, we're, you can do it at circle time if you want it first. Um, we're going to get the date, the time, if there are clouds, wind, or rain. We're gonna write the temperature down. Now I have my thermometer right here. I don't know if you guys can see where the red is in the middle. So we would look at this thermometer and you're gonna to try to copy it down on this thermometer and write the numbers right there. So you're gonna get a lot of practice with writing your numbers and writing different things, drawing pictures. So I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. All right, let me go ahead and turn off my share so I can see everybody again. Okay, now I can see you. All right, so again, I'm gonna be out there in October, in the first part of October. You guys are gonna start doing lessons with your docents. So the teacher or your parent docents are gonna teach you how to use thermometers and you're gonna keep using that skill all the time. I've got all these different ones. Look at this big one. Can you see this big one? See how big it is? And right in the middle is where the temperature goes up and down. So again, we're going to practice. We're going to figure out once I get out there where the best place is to put your thermometers. And we may want like a small one like this one. I don't know if you guys have a window. See, that one's got some colors to it. Or if we want to do a big one like this, then we can add some other marks to the outside, some colors to the outside, so that if we know we're talking about hot or cold, we can kind of work on those temperatures. All right. So for now, all I need you to do is start looking around, noticing if there are any thermometers anywhere. 
and start paying attention to temperatures, if it's hot or cold. Like when you go to open your refrigerator, how cold do you think your refrigerator has to be? How cold does your freezer have to be? And if you have a washer and dryer, when you take clothes out of the dryer, are they warm or are they cool? Okay, so start experimenting with these different temperatures. All right, so we are all done with that. Is there anybody that has any questions?